Hello, this is John from THKP, and today we're going to be doing a custom paint demo. We're going to be building a glass of milk. Enjoy! Okay, first things first, we're going to create a new flutter project. Let's go ahead and just open up that folder. This will create the default Flutter app, which has a bunch of random stuff in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of that stuff. And we're gonna replace this with a glass of liquid demo. So I gotta create this. This will be a stateful widget. You'll see why later. In the create state method, I'm gonna go ahead and return a new state object that I haven't actually created yet. Okay, so inside here is where the magic's gonna happen. First thing I'm gonna do is just create a scaffold with a background color of orange. Let's go ahead and fire this up. I just want to see what we're working with. Okay, so as you probably expected, I have an orange screen. Uh, let's add something interesting to this. So in the body, I'm just going to add a center container. I'm going to make it 120 by oh, 180 or so. And for the child, this is when the custom painting is going to come into play. So I'm going to use the custom paint widget. This widget takes a painter as an argument, and this is the class that I'm going to create, the painter. So I'm going to call it glass of liquid. Okay, let's let that auto format. So I need to create this glass of liquid painter. So let's go ahead and do that. Extends custom painter. And you'll see if you override this class, you'll see these two methods, paint and should repaint. Paint is fairly self-explanatory. That's where you do your actual painting. You can use this canvas object uh, and it has plenty of methods for drawing things. So we'll do that in just a minute. Should repaint is where you tell Flutter that your object needs to be redrawn. So if some property of your object changes, that's where you'd want to call, that's where you'd want to return true. For now, we're just always going to return true. So Flutter will always repaint the object. That's very expensive as you might imagine, but for this little toy, it will work just fine and we're gonna change this towards the end of this anyway. All right, so now let's work on painting. But first I wanna just discuss the anatomy of a glass of liquid. Look at an image one, it kind of looks like two ovals where the sides are just connected. So we're gonna follow that general pattern and I think it looks pretty nice. So we'll need a few colors. Let's create some. For the glass color, I'm going to use white with an alpha of, we'll start with 150, see how that looks. The style here is going to be paint style fill painting style. I forgot an equal sign. Uh, and I'm going to draw a border around the image. This is somewhat stylized, but I think it looks kind of nice. I'm going to copy this. So the border will be black, and the paint style will be stroke, and I will add a stroke width. And I think four is kind of a nice value for that. Okay, so like I mentioned before, a glass is basically two ovals where the sides are joined. The way you draw ovals in a custom painter is you use the bounding rectangle. So let's create the bounding rectangle for these two ovals. Uh, keep reading equal signs. The top rectangle will go from the 
very left side of the custom paint and the very top to the very right side. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to use the width again, which would draw a perfect circle, but instead of drawing a perfect circle, we're going to skew it a little bit. This is actually going to be a field on the class. And let's make it a final double. And then we'll create a parameter. And obviously, I need to go ahead and add that here. And I'll make it point 0.2 just for now. Let's go ahead and draw that. Draw oval top glass. Okay, kind of looks like what I was expecting. Let's draw the bottom. All right, so instead of just going from the left to the right side, uh, we're actually going to draw from the center because as I mentioned before, we want the bottom to be a little bit smaller. So this offset is going to be the center uh, of the width. So we just take our width and divide it by two to get the center. And then it's actually going to be the height minus the width. And sorry, I gotta move this. I'll just put it over here temporarily. So it's the height minus the width divided by two and then times our skew. Uh, and the reason for that is we're drawing from the bottom, so we have to say height minus our center point. And the width is just going to be the width of the custom paint times the skew. And the height is going to be the width of the custom paint times the skew times some ratio. And this ratio I'm also going to add as a final parameter here. Okay. The ratio is basically how much smaller the bottom is from the top. Okay, that didn't work. So let's figure out what went wrong here. I think I have an error in my code. Okay, great. So it's drawing an incredibly tiny uh, rectangle and that's not really what we expected. Um, what is going on here? Ah, see, I'm multiplying that by the skew. That should actually be multiplied by the ratio. That looks much more correct. So we have the top and the bottom of our cup. Actually, I'm just gonna move this back here because I like it over there. Um, okay, now instead of just drawing two simple rectangles, what we really wanna do is draw a path. What a path is, is just a series of lines and curves that are joined together. We'll call this cup path. And this is very similar to drawing our two rectangles. The first step is to move to the upper left side of the cup, top left. So this just moves to midway down. It basically moves to this exact point right here. Okay, first step is to draw an arc. And we're drawing that arc within the top rectangle. The starting angle is gonna be pi because we're on the left side of the unit circle. The sweep is also going to be pi because we wanna sweep 180 degrees and force move to will force our cursor to wind up on the right side of the cup. So basically what this does is it draws this arc right here. Okay, let's draw a line to the bottom right corner. Let's draw another arc. If we start at this zero, we sweep for pi. Then we force move to. And then let's draw our final line right back up to the top left corner. So if I draw this path, 
All right, so we have a nice cup shape here. Let's go ahead and draw an outline of it. We can basically just draw the same path again, except with our black outline. And now we have a nice outlined cup. And if I go ahead and draw the top oval, uh, we have a pretty nice mm, cup that has sort of an accentuated outline. Um, now, in order to draw the liquid inside, you basically want to take this top oval and shrink it down to wherever the liquid is. So in order to figure out where the liquid is, we're going to add another parameter. And we're going to do what's called a linear interpolate with this rectangle. So I'm going to say liquid top equals rect lurk. This will basically calculate a rectangle that's in between our bottom and our top and the fullness tells you how far to interpolate. So if fullness was 50%, it would interpolate you know, to about halfway up the cup. Um, anyway, it's much easier to see how this works uh, once you have it going on. So let's do another thing called liquid path. And now instead of top, we're just doing liquid top. Simple. All right, now after we draw our glass, we want to draw our liquid. Uh, and we'll have another field for this. I have to create that field in a second. I accidentally wrote draw paint. And let's do the same trick here where we draw the top oval milk. So we need to create milk color and milk top paint. I'm just going to copy this. Milk top paint is just going to be pure white. And milk, uh, what did I call the other thing? And milk color is going to be some color that's very close to white. All right, and then in order for this to work, we need to add a fullness. So as I mentioned, if we put 0.5, it'll draw the milk halfway up the cup. Okay, so we have successfully drawn a cup of milk. And one of the cool things about Custom Painter is, you know, it's it'll fill its bounds. So you can go ahead and play with these values. You can make kind of a, you know, squat cup if you want. You can make an absurd looking cup. Um, and you can change these values and do some pretty interesting things. Now is a good time to revisit our should repaint method. As I mentioned earlier, we're just returning true. This is a bit inefficient, so let's improve this. To do this, you can replace the type here with your type, the type of your painter. And then it's a simple matter of just comparing the values. So we want to repaint our cup of milk if any of these values are different than the current values. All right, so this should improve the efficiency and only repaint the cup of milk if these values change. Okay, so that's kind of neat, but if I was just trying to draw a cup, I would not use a custom painter. A custom painter is useful for cases where you're drawing stuff dynamically, or you're drawing stuff with programmatic constraints. So just to demonstrate that, let's have this cup respond to some user input. I think that'll make the case for this custom painter a lot more compelling.
Okay, so as you can see, I've just added these couple sliders here so that you can mess with the attributes of the cup. This is highly amusing, actually. Um, and this is more along the lines of when you would want to make a custom painter. This thing is very dynamic. It's very responsive to user input. Um, if you're just drawing an image or something like that, you probably want to use an image widget or some sort of vector illustration or something like that. But there are a lot of cases where you might want to use custom painter. It's a very cool widget, so I thought it would be a good idea to put together this tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you're looking for a deeper dive on custom paints, Matt has a great video for that. All right, thanks again. I'll see you next time.